Last week's Boston bombings uh, shocked the world because it's the first successful terrorist attack in the United States for quite some time. The Boston Marathon is not something that traditionally people would um, assess as a security threat. You would expect a higher profile event, something more international like the Olympics or uh, some major international sporting meet. A marathon in a you know, mid-range American city is a somewhat surprising target. And yet it does highlight how terrorist attacks can happen in all sorts of places. It seems to be that there were two brothers of Chechen origin who were living in the Boston area um, who carried out the attacks. What is as of yet unclear is the degree to which they may or may not have been connected to outside groups. It appears the older brother uh, had traveled recently to uh, Dagestan, uh, their home where the family is originally from. Um, and it appears that his online activity demonstrates some level of radicalization. It also appears that the Russian authorities were at least concerned enough about him that they informed their American counterparts of um, his activities and him as a person of potential interest. However, they were willing to let him travel in and out of the country. One suspects that they might have decided to do something if they thought he was a more dangerous threat uh, and a sort of potential threat. Um, American authorities, it appears, did look into the case. They spoke to him on at least one occasion uh, with his family present. And um, they seem to have done an investigation and concluded that he wasn't an immediate threat. What can we draw from that? It's very difficult to know. It's possible authorities at the time may have been very busy with other cases or other uh, operations. It's possible that the information simply didn't reveal a potential case or didn't cross a threshold of concern that would deem deeper investigation. It's also possible at the time um, he was not particularly thinking of carrying out any sort of terrorist incident. It might have been subsequently that he decided that this was an act he wanted to do or this was an act he had been tasked to do. I think it's very difficult to know exactly what the Chechen element in this is. It could just be that these happen to be two Chechen individuals who decided to go carry out this loner solo terrorist attack by themselves. It could be there is more to it. Uh, it could be that when they went back to Chechnya, the older brother was able to make connections with radicals and other individuals who helped him supply, who helped him train. Traditionally, it has been very rare to find Chechens involved in international jihadism or at least attacks against the West. We have had repeated instances of Chechens showing up on battlefields in Syria, most recently in Afghanistan in the past, in Pakistan at various times. And there have been plots abroad that have had Chechen links, um, be this in terms of a chap called Loris Dukayev, who in 2010 tried to attack the Jalans Posten uh, newspaper in Copenhagen, or be it a group of Chechens who were picked up um, late last year as part of an operation that was allegedly going to possibly target Gibraltar. Um, in that particular instance, there was evidence that the individuals had connected with elements or had trained at least in uh, Pakistan. Um, but these instances are rare. Traditionally, uh, North Caucasus uh, jihadists, they have possibly gone to fight on jihadi battlefields abroad. But when they have conducted terrorist attacks against uh, soft targets or against uh, civilian targets, it has tended to be in Russia. In Russia, we have seen repeated large-scale terrorist attacks linked to this region. However, it is very rare for these terrorist attacks to go beyond Russia's borders. While it remains early to say definitively what we're looking at in the case of the Boston bombings, I think it can broadly be concluded that what we are looking at here is probably a very isolated terrorist cell. Be they loners in the sense that they had absolutely no connections to militants abroad and they had purely passively consumed this information online and decided to carry out this act, or be they a group that had some sort of loose connections or were showing up on the periphery of other investigations. I think this tendency towards these very small, very isolated and disaggregated terrorist cells is something that we're going to continue to see in the future. We've seen it over the past couple of years, and it's something that's probably going to continue going forwards. I think that what the problem this poses for intelligence agencies is trying to figure out how you put together the information to identify a cell like this which is so disconnected. Traditionally intelligence agencies will rely on connections as their point of entry or point of uh, uh, the tripwires that they will sort of try to catch individuals. Um, I think the tendency we've seen in the past few years is that groups have moved in the direction of trying to either instigate individuals to carry out acts by themselves or these cells becoming much more disconnected. This means that for intelligence agencies, the data collection element and the data analysis element becomes ever, uh, ever harder. Um, 
But I think that uh, finding ways of connecting the dots and of understanding the sort of broader pictures that you're looking at is something which is clearly going to be key in uh, understanding how to counter future terrorist attacks. The United States has, uh, is probably going to walk away from this learning the lesson that they need to do more to try to understand and prevent radicalization amongst uh, parts of their communities. Um, so far, the United States has a rather underdeveloped uh, countering violent extremism, or, pre or prevent as it's known in British terminology, um, program. Um, and I think refocusing on that is clearly something that is going to uh, have to happen in the next few years, given the continuing appearance of cells like this or individuals eager to go and fight abroad. Um, I think the other element that is coming out of this particular plot is the media reaction and the importance of social networks and social media in spreading information and misinformation amongst uh, the broader public community. I think that governments going forwards, in particular the United States, with its very active and very large media community, um, is going to have to find ways of managing media response in terrorist incidents like this better. I think the amount of bad information that was coming out during the actual event itself and the subsequent search led to individuals who had um, no connection with the terrorist incident coming into the crosshairs uh, of public sort of fury. Um, and that is not good. And it also further enhances the effectiveness of the terrorist attack because it further throws confusion to society. So I think um, counterterrorism officials are going to have to try to figure out better ways of managing their media strategies during terrorist incidents like this in the future. <laughs>